Hello everyone, and thank you for attending our presentation. My name is Sebastian Kokar, and I'm a PhD candidate from the ANU Center for Social Research and Methods. Together with Paula Rekas, who is Senior Methodological Advisor to the Social Research Center, we will present our paper titled, Why do people participate in probability-based online panel surveys? This was a joint project between the ANU Center for Social Research and Methods and the Social Research Center from Melbourne, Australia. I would like to use this opportunity to thank all ANU and SRC researchers and qualitative interviewers who contributed to this project, as well as Life in Australia research participants. In this presentation, I will first outline the study and its objectives. Then Paul will present methods, the results based on quantitative data, and the results of our content analysis of panel recruitment communications. I will then present the results of in-depth qualitative interviewing and personality assessment, and finish this presentation by summarizing key findings and practical implications of this research. This was a mixed method study on participation in online panels, which means that we used a slightly less traditional methodological approach. The main aim of this project was to understand why people join a probability-based online panel, why they participate in month-to-month -month surveys, and why they opt out. Most similar research in this space has been on response and non-response in cross-sectional surveys, including web surveys, but not in panel surveys. Since it is important to go deeper into respondents' motivations, barriers, and find practical panel recruitment and maintenance solutions, we found it useful to associate the responses with the existing social psychological theories on survey participation, especially in a panel or longitudinal setting, including probability-based online panel research. Last, we've done some preliminary investigation into the association between personalities and survey completion patterns. To study online panel participation, we use data and documentation from the only probability-based online panel in Australia, known as Life in Australia. There are four main components of this study, which Paul will now present. Hi, this is Paul Abrakis, and I'm going to be talking about our methodology and some of the results. We use mixed mode methodologies, both quantitative and qualitative. And from a quantitative standpoint, we gathered survey data to an open-ended question, and we did some psychological testing. From a qualitative standpoint, we did in-depth interviewing, and we did a qualitative content analysis of recruitment materials. And I'll be saying more about these methodologies in the next few slides. Let me say more about the quantitative Life in Australia panel data. Uh, Life in Australia is a national research panel that was created by a probability sampling by the Social Research Center. Most of the data is gathered online, but some does come in via caddy. The one open-ended question we asked uh, in June of 2019 went, we would like to understand why you chose to be part of life in Australia and what, if anything, you value about being part of it. There were 2,000 panelists who completed this questionnaire, but a little less than 1,600 gave permission for us to use their data for research purposes. And we turned these open-ended verbatims, the 1,557, into quantitative data through a very rigorous multi-step process with a lot of reliability checks built throughout. Fourteen of the panel members that uh, completed the open-ended question participated in uh, completing a personality test. The test included 28 closed-ended items and measured four personality traits, and there were four different types of panelists that participated. The frequent responders, those that we term sleepers or dozers, those who we term backouts, and the fast voluntary attritters. For our qualitative data, we conducted in-depth interviews with the 14 members who completed the personality test. These were done uh, back in 2020 uh, into early this year. And there were two qualitative interviewers that took uh, carried these out. The interviews were conducted virtually or via phone and the participants were asked about their general participation in surveys, their recruitment and, and staying in the Life in Australia panel, motivations and barriers to their panel participation, and if applicable, why they weren't completing certain waves of the panel. These IDIs lasted approximately 30 to 45 minutes. Then also from a qualitative standpoint, we did a content analysis in which we uh, looked at 
14 different scripts or emails that the Social Research Center used to motivate people to join the panel or stay active in it. And each of us, independent of each other, uh, coded it from a qualitative standpoint for various themes that we thought we were emerging in what was being communicated. And when we later compared the themes that we came up with, we saw a very high level of correspondence. So let me start presenting some of the results before turning this back over to Sebastian. Um, we coded the open-ended data in a very rigorous process. We started out by independently sampling 100 of the verbatims and devised our own coding system. We compared systems with each other, found very similar uh, categorizations, and we finally settled on a set of 18 categories. We then coded each of the, we, we split the uh, 1,557, and each of us coded each of the verbatims into as many as three motivations for each panelist. So these became our data. And ultimately, we had 16 binary yes-no variables that indicated whether a panelist mentioned or did not mention a particular motivation. So now let's look at this table, which indicates the frequencies by which the various motivations were mentioned in the open-ended question. You'll notice on the left side, uh, we've group these into sort of a larger, bigger picture motivations, things like being motivated by an intellectual attraction or being motivated to give or contribute something. On the right side, you see the particular motivations that we coded, and a little over a third of the panelists said that they were active in Lena because of self-actualization, allowing my voice to be heard. Also, some of the panelists, about a third, said sharing views, opinions to make a difference. If you look down into the middle of this column, you'll see number nine, uh, it says receiving incentives, and you'll see less than 10% uh, in their open-ended response actually mentioned that. As I mentioned earlier, we did that qualitative content analysis of the recruitment materials that the Social Research Center used to recruit and to uh, try to get people to stay active in the, in the Life in Australia panel. Here's a table here that on the left side uh, compares reasons in recruitment communications to join Life in Australia and to stay active in it against the actual self-reported motivations that the panelists gave in their verbatims. And you'll see here that there was a uh, a fairly strong correspondence between what the Social Research Center on the left said to people or communicated to them versus what people many months and, and in some cases years later said in the open-ended verbatim in 2019. And here you'll see the most correspondences between the theme of sharing your opinions to make a difference or contributing to a survey or science or research. Also, the idea that my opinions are valued, appreciated, taken into account. So those are clearly uh, a, a large part of the correspondence between the two. Down below, you'll see that something is said about incentives uh, between what's said in the recruitment scripts versus what people said back. So this is the second half of the, of the table, and here you'll see two new themes on the right side uh, that weren't on the previous one, and that is the idea of sharing views and opinions to represent other people like me, and also the idea that the entity that's doing this research, the Social Research Center, is someone you can trust, some, some organization that's reliable. The evidence from qualitative interviewing data was fairly consistent with the evidence from survey data, but we could also identify a number of barriers and reasons for non-response and attrition. In the recruitment phase, the topic of research and a legitimate data collector seem to be the most important survey attributes to recruited panelists. Also, not many join to earn money or donate to charities. While we interviewed only those who had joined the panel, they mentioned a couple of potential barriers. Not knowing where the data is going and how it is used and how it was not clear that Life in Australia was an ongoing survey. Insufficient information provided about the panel 
also led to attrition. In terms of the motivational factors for survey completion, they seem to be fairly similar to the ones in the recruitment stage. We categorize them into four main groups, contribution-focused motivation, survey-focused motivation, self-expression-focused motivation, and incentives-focused motivation. We noticed something that probably couldn't be observed in a quantitative study. While all stopped responding panelists and most backouts mentioned various reasons why they stopped participating or opted out, such as being busy, issues with questions, and not appealing questionnaire topics, they had something in common, a major life change, such as having children, going through a divorce, or moving house. In terms of monetary rewards, not many mentioned incentives as a motivational factor themselves and would be happy to participate without receiving them, especially the frequent respondents group. There seems to be a gap between how important incentives are for their participation and how important they believe incentives are to other people. The literature on survey participation lists different social psychological theories explaining survey response, such as social exchange theory, self-perception theory, and leverage salience theory. We were able to dig a little bit deeper with qualitative data and we had an easier job connecting panelists' answers to the relevant theories. All in all, we observed that all theories can explain at least certain panel participation decisions and or trends. They have been shown to be sufficiently robust to help understand the time dimension of survey participation. Also, different theories can be applied to justify decision-making of the same panelist. In the recruitment phase, contacted respondents tend to make shallower, quicker decisions to join the panel, and authority as one of the heuristic principles has quite an influence besides survey topic. Also, it seems like the majority of panelists see survey participation as social exchange. They invest their time, but they get to voice their opinions and contribute to discussions. Recent action approach, leverage salience theory, and again social exchange theory, seem to represent the best theoretical foundations for explaining panel participation behavioral change. New costs can be either new questionnaire attributes or changed panel characteristics, which can lead to changed beliefs, intentions to participate, and finally behavioral change. And last, disk personality assessment results. Why did we choose disk test? It is one of the most popular personality tests, but not as popular as big five personality traits. On the other hand, DISC is often used in business organizations and is said to predict behavior better than most other personality tests. We used this opportunity to investigate the usability of this test on a smaller sample first. DISC stands for dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance as personality traits. Although this was clearly a very small sample for quantitative research, we found some interesting differences between the studied groups. Non-respondents on average scored much lower on dominance and higher on steadiness. Interestingly, dominance is associated with enjoying challenges and steadiness with getting restless and bored when involved in routine and repetitive activities. Hence, this might be an interesting space for further research. To sum up, just like we anticipated, mixed method research indeed helped understand panelists' motivation and barriers better, and qualitative data can reveal otherwise hidden facts that drive panelists' response behavior. Therefore, we would suggest online panels to carry out this kind of research to have more information about their panelists' experience to improve their panel management strategies. Also, it was surprising to find out how little value monetary incentives as extrinsic motivation, had in comparison to intrinsic motivational factors. Out of almost 1,600 panelists, only about 200 listed rewards or donations to charities as motivational factors. Therefore, online panels could consider adjusting incentive protocols so as to redirect the money saved into other panel management solutions. Also, while we confirmed that different social psychological theories can explain survey participation in longitudinal design, we also observed that the theory is often not considered when designing recruitment materials and communication. Lastly, personality assessment results showed that there is a potential to use DISC test to understand, maybe even predict, panel response behavior.
I hope you enjoyed this presentation and we would like to thank you for your attention.